Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the voiceover. I finally have a proper microphone so I can do voiceovers. And today's video is going to be about inking pieces with a brush and separate ink. This is one of my favorite ways to ink pieces because of the fine details you can get and the life. It really gives your line work. These are a couple pieces I did recently with a brush and ink. And these are each actually done with the same ink, which is the blue one I'll show you later, or in just a second. But I wanted to show you how you can really get a lot of different line weights with a brush and ink. And you can also get those line weights with a brush pen, but you get a lot of variety when you use separate inks because you can use literally any ink with whatever brushes you have. So, some inks that I like to use are these. This one is Higgins Black Magic, which is pretty cheap and waterproof. This is a Sumi ink, which I love because it's really black. You obviously can't dip into that little bottle, so you can get these little cups and put ink inside those and keep them there. And then colored inks. This one's blue from Noodlers, and this one is a Winsor & Newton one, which is not light fast. So a uh, thing about inks is they're messy. Here, I already have ink. I haven't even opened a bottle yet, and I already have ink on my fingers. And now we're going to go over some brushes really quick. This first brush is a Cotman one, which is a very budget-friendly version if you're just starting out. It's synthetic, and this is a Kuretake Minso brush, which is a Kalinske Sable brush. And then the next ones are Da Vinci Maestro, which are also Kalinske Sable. And here you can just see the difference in the sizes of the tips here, but you can actually get very similar line weights from both of these brushes. It's all about control. Here I am starting out showing you a sample piece. Sorry, my throat's a little dry. But here's a sample piece, just so I can show you the tips and tricks I have for getting good, clean, consistent line work with a brush and ink bottle. I'm using the Winsor & Newton ink here, which is pretty and good for exercises or for pieces that you're going to be reproducing, but it is not light fast, so I really don't recommend using it for pieces that you plan on selling the originals of. It will fade very quickly in the light, in the sunlight. And I'm keeping it real time here, this video, so that you can see how much time you actually spend when inking, or how much time I actually spend when inking something. I think it can really discourage people watching videos on YouTube I know it is very misleading watching speed paints especially because things don't happen in real life as quickly as they do on YouTube. There is editing, there's cutting pieces out, there's uh, speeding things up. And I just wanted to show you guys what real time inking looks like for me. Just so that you know, you know, you know. So you can see here. Uh, one of my first tips is how I'm holding my brush there. That is how I usually hold my brush when I ink. You can see it's it's not exactly the same as how I hold a, pen I hold a pencil. It is vertical, almost 90 degrees with the paper, and I hold it farther back on the brush. I don't hold it down on the ferrule, which is the metal part that holds the bristles. I don't choke my brushes. I hold them farther back. It gives me it allows me to get longer lines, and holding it vertically allows me maximum visibility for the lines that I'm currently working on. Another tip for maximum visibility is to always push your brush away from you. Here's a little bit of a better view here. And you can see here, I push my brush away from my body. I start pulling it and it doesn't work, so I start pushing to meet the lines. and Pushing the brush away from you allows you to see the bristles of the brush and the line you're making at the same time, and you that visibility allows you to control your lines more than anything else. If you pull the brush towards you, you're not seeing the line you're making it as you're making it. Oh, excuse me. Ooh. Excuse me. Sorry. So yeah, you can tell, or you can see here, to make sure that the line is always going away from me, I turn the paper. Maximum control. This is, 
these are really the biggest tips I can give you guys is holding the brush vertically, pushing the brush away from you when you ink a line, and turning your paper, keeping your paper turned. The ink you use, the brush you use, all of that is secondary. They're really just um, like using a nice brush and using nice ink is nice, but it's really just for the enjoyment of using it. It's really all about how much time you spend inking something or making sure that you're maximizing your pro yes productivity maximizing your efficiency just keep a good eye on what you're doing i sped this up a little bit because it's starting to get kind of repetitive i don't know why that pedal didn't turn out as great as the others and then here in just a second i will show you like you can see this i haven't switched brushes at all i'm using the same brush for all of these lines and i fill in those spaces with the brush and I get to do these tiny little lines with the brush, all without switching it up. So you really save time. You you spend more time having to pause to dip your brush into the ink and making sure that you're you know there's the appropriate amount of ink on your brush. You don't want to go in with too much ink on your brush, or you'll blob it all over all over the place. But you really do save time too without having to switch between different pins. If you were trying to use a fine liner, you would have to switch all the time to get the different line weights or you'd have to go over lines multiple times to get the different line weights which a lot of people do you get a lot of control that way but you can also learn to control a brush with ink just as well it just takes practice and that's really what I suggest that you do is practice get scrap paper and just go at it and I think you really should do that before you do any piece not just when you're learning how to ink with a brush and ink, you also will need to warm up before you start each individual piece. You don't want to go straight in with your ink and your brush without getting a feel for your brush that day. Warming up is very important. And when you get a new brush, period, like it's your first time using that brush, you will definitely need to practice with it on the side or on some scrap paper like how I am here. This is showing you a little bit of how you can get a feel for your brush and this is touching the brush to the paper as lightly as possible, pushing it down to its maximum and then lightening it up again at the very end. And then here's it with another brush, here's that other sable brush, the Kuretake one. And you can see I can get almost as thin with this as I could with that tiny little Da Vinci brush but also way thicker because it's obviously more brush. And a, this brush is really a great all-purpose brush. Like I said, I'll have links for everything down in the description box below. But it's so nice to be able to get a wide range of line weights with one tool. And the lines are so lively, too, with a brush. And honestly, one of the biggest... I mentioned it earlier, but one of the biggest things about inking with a brush and ink is that I can have my favorite brushes and I can buy whatever ink I want and I get so much more excitement out of being able to buy a new bottle of ink and using different colors and you get so many more color options so then you can ink your work in not just black and black is great but variety is the spice of life right all right so still just playing around with making shapes with the brush here and this is here pulling it towards me which is much more difficult you saw I had to go over that line twice and this last one here is that Cotman brush which doesn't look as impressive like the lines don't get as thin as the other ones but I don't think that actually has anything to do with the brush itself I think that has to do with how old it is so a synthetic brush is cheaper a cheaper option for beginners but it's not necessarily a worse brush. It'll still work just as fine. So that's it for this video today. Just some quick tips for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.